So here we are in episode five, and this is going to be really exciting because this is where we're going to actually customize our Tmux session and make it our own. So let's get started. So right now at this time, I have no open Tmux sessions at all, and that's okay because we want to start fresh and we're going to create a Tmux config file and we want Tmux to open up this config file when we first load it. And Tmux will only read its config file when it is first loaded unless you make special edits to the config file which I'll go into later. So right now just make sure you, you have no Tmux sessions open because we are fixing to start from scratch here. Now the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to create a config file for Tmux. And so we're going to run nano and then we're going to go to our home directory which is what this tilde slash stands for. And we're going to call this file .tmux dot conf and now we'll press enter and more than likely if you're starting from scratch and this is your first time doing this it will open a empty config file just like this right here now the way this file works is that when tmux first loads up if you don't have any other tmux sessions open and you first open tmux it's going to read this file right here if it exists and as long as you don't have any errors in the file tmux will read the file exactly like it is but right now you do not have anything in this file now in earlier videos, I talked about how hard it was to get to the default prefix keys for Tmux. Having to click Shift and then B is really hard to do depending on how you're typing at the time. One of the first things I want to show you how to set up in your config file is how to change the prefix keys for Tmux. And you change the default keys by pasting in this command here. And what we're doing here is we're setting two options within Tmux. And this is going to be a global option. That's what the dash G means. And next to the slash G for global, I get that we are customizing the prefix. And now the C stands for the control key. If you remember the default prefix for Tmux is control B. And so the C is the control key. But looking at the first line, you'll see that I'm changing the prefix to be control J. But if you look at the second line, what I also do is I set the prefix to for control F. And yes, Tmux will allow you to have two different prefix keys. And so one benefit of having two different prefix keys is if you look at your keyboard, your F key and your J key is, are right where your fingers naturally lay out on your keyboard, making them easier to reach than the B key. So Control F and Control J should be relatively easy for you to use depending on what you're typing at that time. Now again, this is just my personal preference. You can change the prefix key to whatever you want it to be. And so now we'll save this file and then we'll open up Tmux. And so now we'll send the new prefix, Control F, we will create a vertical split and I'll send control J this time and create a horizontal split. So see, it's just like the previous prefix, control B, except it's control F, control J, or whatever else you decide to make it. And so now I'll close out completely of all these terminal sessions and I'll keep going until I'm all the way back to the command line. And we'll open up that config file again and we'll add another customization. And the reason we exited completely out of Tmux before editing the config file is because Tmux by default does not read the config file until it loads for the first time in the session. So you can't have any running sessions in the background. However, you can edit the config file with this command right here that will make reading the Tmux config file a lot easier. And what this line does is that it creates a new keyboard shortcut for us to use. What we can do is we can send the prefix either control C or control F in our case, and then we can type the R key for reload. And what that does is it reloads the Tmux config file. And so we can make changes to the config file and reload the config file all without having to exit Tmux. And so I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. I'll save the file and exit, and then open a Tmux session. And so far, nothing looks different. However, if you were to send the prefix and then type R, that went by pretty quickly. But if you pay attention to the footer at the bottom of the screen, you will see a message confirming that the config file has been reloaded. So what I did was I sent the prefix and then typed the R key. And then again, down at the bottom, we got a message saying that Tmux config file had been reloaded. From this point to the rest of the video, you'll be able to configure Tmux from within Tmux itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send the prefix and create a vertical split. And then I'm going to come over here to the right hand side and I'll open up that config file again. And what we're going to do is we're going to paste in another configuration to the bottom of the file. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add mouse mode to my configuration file. And you may be wondering what mouse mode means. And it's basically exactly what it sounds like. So let's save the file. And now we will reload the file by sending the, the prefix and clicking R. So now if it reloading, you should be able to take your mouse and click over into the other pane and instantly your cursor moves with it. And you can also take your mouse and resize either one of these panes as needed. And this applies to any pane or window you may have open. You're able to click in and out of it using the mouse and then you can drag and resize 
the panes as needed. And I personally think that that's really cool and I use that in all of my TMAX sessions. I can create another window and then I can move between the different windows by clicking on them down here at the bottom and instantly I'm transported to it. Now you can do all this by using the keyboard as well, but in my opinion, this is a little faster and a little easier than using the keyboard to just use your mouse. So now I'm gonna make some more tweaks to my Tmos config file. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste several at one time. And I'll leave a link down below to my actual config file, which has a bunch of these settings that we're mentioning today, as well as some others you may be interested in. And I've added several different customizations all at one time. And I'm not gonna go completely in depth in these. I'll include a link down below that will go to the actual man page for Tmux for those of y'all that are wanting some more information. But I will put comments in the config file giving you the basics of what these shortcuts do. So if you look at the config file, this first group of settings that I've just added give you keyboard shortcuts for moving between the planes. And I've also created keyboard shortcuts for splitting horizontal and vertically. So I'm going to go ahead and save the file and then reload the file. So now I'll move to the right pane. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to disconnect from everything so that you can see everything from scratch. And we're now back to an empty terminal with no running tmux. And I'll do tmux ls just to verify that there is no running tmux session. And so I'll start a new tmux session. And here we are in an empty tmux session. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a horizontal split. And I'm going to send the prefix key. This time I'm going to tap H for horizontal. See, that's a change that I made in my configuration file. I set the shortcut key for horizontal split to be H. And now if I send the prefix key and then hit V for vertical, I have a vertical split. Isn't that pretty cool? How I can do H for horizontal and V for vertical? That's also a lot easier to remember in my opinion. And again, that's prefix H for horizontal, prefix V for vertical. Pretty easy to remember, right? And these are some TMUX shortcuts that I personally use on a daily basis. But that's not all that I have added. Now another tweak that I made is that I can hit the Alt key and then the up key arrow to go up or the down arrow to go down or the left arrow to go left and the right arrow to go right. So if you're somebody that doesn't want to leave the keyboard, so all you gotta do is hit the Alt and then the arrow key to move between the different panes. Whether that's up, down, right, or left. And that just to me makes everything a lot easier and a lot quicker. And another thing we can do is we can create a new Tmux window and then we'll create another one, and we'll create another one. So now we have four different Tmux windows open. It really doesn't matter how many Tmux windows you create for you to see this next change we made. Now you saw earlier that I can take the mouse to switch between the different tabs that I have open down here, but one of the customizations that I've added gives you the ability to hold down the shift key, and then you can press the left arrow to go to the left, or the right arrow to go to the right. So again, that shift, and then left or right, depending on where you're going. So again, your fingers don't never have to leave the keyboard if you don't want them to. So if you're somebody that thinks it's faster to stay at the keyboard the whole time, you can use these keyboard shortcuts to move between windows and move between panes, or you can take your mouse and click between them. So now let's reopen our config file. Now these last two lines of command that I've added to the config file give us the ability to reorder windows. So let's save the config file, and we'll do prefix R to reload. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hold down Control and Shift, and then we're going to press one of the arrow keys. So let me run top to make this easier to see. If I hold down Control Shift and then hit the arrows, you probably noticed down at the bottom that my H top window moved over to the left. So if I go back to H top, hold down Control Shift, and then the right arrow this time, and moved my top screen over to the right. So now we can easily reorder the windows within our session by holding the Control Shift and then pressing the arrow key. And now for another tweak. I'm going to nano the tmux config file, and I'm going to go all the way down here to the bottom, and then I'm going to paste this command in, and I'll save it. And as you can read, this command is going to allow us to synchronize our panels. But what exactly does that mean? So in order to best show that, after we've saved this file, let's move to one of our windows that don't have anything going on in them. And we'll hit the prefix key, and then R to reload. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a couple of different panes. So I'm going to hit the prefix key and then H for horizontal. And then I'm going to do the prefix and V for vertical. And I'm going to go back up here to the top pane. And I'm going to hit the prefix key and V for vertical again. So now I have four different panes. And so this new customization allows us to sync these different panes together. So what we'll do is we'll hit the prefix key and then Y. And if you notice down at the bottom it said that the synchronization had been toggled. And so now we can run some simple command like uptime. And if you notice, 
every pane ran the same command at the same time. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Now this may seem kind of pointless at first, but what if you're logged into four different servers and you need to run updates on them all at one time in order to save time? So first what we're going to do is we're going to hit the prefix and then the Y key to stop synchronization. So what I've done here is I've logged into four different servers. And so I'm going to send the prefix and then hit Y for synchronization. And so now I'm going to run sudo apt update. And it's going to ask for the password. And then in the three different servers that are on Ubuntu, apt update successfully ran. Fedora server, apt update didn't run successfully because you use, a, you use a different command for Fedora. So if you're a system administrator of a bunch of different systems of the same OS, this could be really useful for you. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to send the prefix key and then Y to stop synchronization. So now if I type, I'm only typing in the one window that I'm active in. So the last thing I want to show you in this video is how to customize the theme of your Tmux session. And so first we're going to open up our Tmux config file. And I'll paste these commands here at the bottom for the theme and for the status bar. Now I'll link below to a blog that includes all these commands we've covered today as well as some extras that you may be interested in. And these last couple of lines have to do with theming in Tmux. Now this just barely scratches the surface of everything you can do theme-wise in Tmux. I'll include a link in the video description to the actual documentation for this. But you can typically do a Google search for different Tmux configurations that are already made that people are sharing for everybody to use. So if you don't like my settings, for example, you can probably find someone else's that you like better, or you can tweak my settings as needed to best suit you and your needs. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna save the file, and then I'm gonna do the, the prefix key in R to reload Tmux. And if you're looking at the footer, you can already tell a big difference between what you had before and what we have now. So all of the current Tmux windows have been moved to the center. That's just something that I personally like better than the previous way they had it all crowded over to the left. On the right hand side, I shortened the date and time to, down to just showing the current time. And what this customization also did is color the current tab in blue. So if I was to switch over to my window one, now you would see down at the bottom window one is now blue, or window three, or window four. So whichever window I am active in, it would be labeled blue down here at the bottom. And that can be very useful if you happen to have several different windows open. And again, the link down below would take you to my personal config file, which has other additions to it that you may be interested in. And I'll also link down below to the official documentation for Tmux that gives you a lot more information for it. So feel free to change your up as needed. You can take my settings if you like them, or you can find your own settings, whatever works best for you. Now, the very last thing I want to cover is that a Tmux config file is not the only way to customize Tmux. Now, it is the easiest way to customize it, in my opinion. But what if, for example, you want to do just a one time change that you don't want to read, you don't want to permanently write it to a config file. Tmux also has what's called a command code where you can type in each of these settings one at a time. Now this is just a basic summary of what the command mode is. You can go to the Tmux official documentation to find out more if you're interested. I just wanted you to be aware that it is there. So to enter command mode, what you do is you send the prefix key and then you hit colon. Now as you can see the footer has completely changed. You now have a cursor and it looks like a command line down at the bottom of your screen. Now before I get much farther the first thing I want to do is set up a split. And so now that I have these two screens side by side I'm going to send the prefix and colon so now we can type a command in this bottom screen. So what I'm going to type in is set dash g and then mouse and what we're going to do is we're going to turn the mouse setting off and then hit enter. And now we are no longer able to use our mouse to switch between panes and we can no longer use our mouse to resize the different windows. I can recall a previous command in command mode by entering command mode and then pressing the up arrow. And then this time we'll turn mouse mode back on again and instantly my mouse responds to changes between the panes and instantly I can resize the panes again. So even though you can use the command mode within Tmux, in my opinion, the config file is the better way to set these options. But command mode is really good for a one-time change. For example, if mouse mode is getting in the way of you trying to do something, you can turn it off until you're finished with it. And then the next time you reload Tmux, it's on by default. Now, all five of these videos gave you a beginner's crash course into Tmux. There's a lot more in depth that you can go into all these settings if you feel like it. Again, I'll reference the official Tmux documentation down below. But for for the majority of the people watching this video, we've covered everything that you're going to be using on a regular basis in Tmux. 
If you've enjoyed these videos, please be sure to like them, share them with somebody that may find them, that may find them interesting, and leave me a comment down below about what you thought your best feature of TMOS was. Thank you everybody for tuning in. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video series.